Hey everyone, welcome back to the Golf House. If you've been here before, if you're new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Jenny and today we're gonna be baking. It is getting towards springtime, it's March. I'm dying to make a pineapple upside down cake. And we're gonna be making it in my iron skillet. How else do you make a pineapple upside down cake? I love it in my iron skillet because the bottom of it gets caramelized and the sides get that little crunchy bit of brown sugar. Oh my gosh, my fave. So, I'm gonna be making two of them. I'll go through one with you, but I gotta make two. One for my house, one for the kids' house. <laughs> it's my favorite. I didn't wanna have to give them the whole cake, so I figured I'd just make them one. <laughs> Also, in other news, this is a brand new camera. I'm so excited, I finally got a new camera. So it's gonna be quite the learning curve for me. So if things are funky at first, I am still trying to go through and do all the programming and change it for lighting and for movement and shading and all these cool things that my other camera didn't have. There's probably too many options and I'm probably gonna totally jack up these videos for the first few, so hang in there with me. I swear they're gonna get better. Anyway, let's get started on the cake. First thing you need to do and the first thing I have done, I have drained one 20 ounce can of crushed pineapple. If you wanna use pineapple rings, you are more than welcome to use pineapple rings. But I put my crushed pineapple into the pan to drain it and I've drained cherries here. So you're gonna need about a third of a cup cherries for the bottom of the pan. Um, I'm obviously gonna take the stems out before I put them in there, but I've just got them on the paper towel draining. And I may have two um, <laughs> jars that I mixed together, so, so there you go. You can make it as pretty, fancy, whatever you wanna do. But that is draining. Here in my iron skillet, I'm gonna turn it on a medium heat. I've got five tablespoons of butter there. While that is melting, I'm gonna turn my attention over here to my dry ingredients. I'm using cake flour. I need one and a half cups of cake flour. That is probably what I have left in here. Okay. Set my sifter down. You're gonna to wanna to sift all of these ingredients together. I got one more tablespoon left, it's going in. Okay, half a teaspoon of baking powder. Half a teaspoon of baking soda. quarter teaspoon salt. That's it for my dry ingredients. And then I like to get a little spatula because you get those little balls left. I never discard them. Push them through. Okay. Back over to my melted butter. So I'm going to take my melted butter and I'm going to push it up the side here. Turn my pan off too, by the way. And three quarter cup of light brown sugar. I'm going to turn this back on just for a sec. Get it kind of caramelly and it's on low. I've got it on a three medium low. So if you get your pan nice and hot like this with the um, brown sugar and the butter, it gets so caramelly. Okay, I'm gonna spread this out a little bit. I want this kind of even. I'm gonna put my pineapple in. Oh, you know what? I wanna put my cherries on. Okay. 
Here my sugar sizzling. I'm gonna turn my pan off now. This pan will stay hot, so as soon as the sugar starts sizzling, I take it out, let it sit on there. So if you are like me and you like a lot of cherries, you can put more. There's no rules here. I know they say there's rules with uh, cakes, but there isn't. Okay, now I'm gonna put my pineapples in. Just right over. I'm just gonna keep it sitting on my hot burner because I want the sugar to stay getting caramelized while I mix up my cake batter. Again, if you wanna put your rings in and make it beautiful, you totally can. I hope my arm's not in your way and <laughs> I hope you can see. Okay. Over here, I'm putting in three egg yolks. I'm going to put in a half a cup of sour cream, about two teaspoons of vanilla. I'm going to start getting this going. And then I'm going to put in three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar. So there's my granulated sugar. Let me get that mixed up. Make sure as you're mixing, you're doing your scrape down. We need nine tablespoons of softened butter. Okay, that was about eight. Nine. Okay, I'm gonna slowly add in the flour. And I'm gonna add about a half a cup of the pineapple juice that I drained. I'm gonna add a little bit more of the pineapple juice. Okay, so it's like three quarter cup of pineapple juice. Ooh, you're twisted. I'm gonna give them a scrape down real quick. This is a delicious cake batter. I could just eat the batter and not even bake it. Okay, let's take it out and pour it into the pan. And we're ready to put it. We're ready to bake it. I have preheated my oven ahead of time to 350 degrees. Okay, get our cake batter over the top of the pineapple. Now this is not a super tall, thick cake, just an FYI. So it will literally be half of it the topping, which is why I love it in the iron skillet so much. If you want more cake, definitely use a smaller iron skillet. Um, I think this one, this one's an oddball. This is older than my mother. And <laughs> as you can see, it's like thin. And um, this came from my father's grandmother my great grandma and so um, I believe it's like an 11 and a half inch or something strange like that there's I think there's hardly any markings on it maybe it's 11 anyway it's kind of an oddball size but it's my favorite one I use this daily for everything including this cake in the oven at 350 degrees and this generally takes about 45 minutes. 
get my cute happy pot holder we made. Our cake is out of the oven. It is gorgeous. I'm gonna run a knife along the side of it. So I'll just use this one. Just to make sure it's not stuck on the sides. I don't think it is. Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna attempt to flip my cake onto this cake platter. And the thing is, these iron skillets are heavy, so if you need help, make sure you ask for it. Ta-da! I left some pineapple in the pan. That's okay. Here it is. I let this sit for about five minutes, and I probably shouldn't have. You need to pop it out right away, or the pineapple sticks in the bottom. <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to take it back out and put it on my cake. No one is ever going to know. The cherries all stayed in. It's just a couple little patches of missing pineapples. Oh my gosh, this smells so good. I can hardly wait for it to cool off. Okay, I'm gonna put my little pineapple, pineapple patches back. <laughs> this is real cooking, folks, you know. Stuff happens, mistakes happen. Now, I did used to have a baking business. I don't know if any of you even know this about me, or you might, and I've, if you've watched my video about me, but I used to have a baking business and I did a whole bunch of wedding cakes. I used to make wedding cakes, birthday cakes. I used to have a couple of counts that I catered and baked for a coffee shop, bookstore in Scottsdale, um, an Italian restaurant in Tempe. I used to make 18 by 18 party tiramisus um, for that place, biscotti, cookies, muffins, tea cakes, you name it. I have baked it. And baking, canning is life, baking is love. <laughs> so anyway, uh, and by the way, I'm still getting used to my camera, so I keep looking at where it's angled, making sure you can see me, and I'm not looking at the camera, so I'm sorry about that. I'm, I'm gonna get better, I swear. Anywho, I've put my hot pineapple back on my cake. <sighs> Yum. It's beautiful. You can hardly tell that I kinda, you know, pulled some of the pineapple off. Super delicious. Making this in the iron skillet homemade. Then after it sits, this um, brown sugar around the edge is crunchy. So good. That's all there is to the iron skillet pineapple upside down cake. So good. You're gonna love it. If you've got iron skillets at your house and you like to use it, try cakes in it, especially ones with fruit. Now you can do the same thing with apple. You can do pear, you could do cherry, anything you wanna do. You can make a cake this way, it's delicious. Anyway folks, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. It really helps me out a lot and I sure do appreciate your support. You can find me on Instagram at JennyGoff18. And if you're on Instagram and you wanna tag me in a cooking project, something that I've made or something that I've canned, something that you just have made or canned and you wanna share, awesome. Tag me in it. I'd love to see your creations. You can tag me at JennyGoff18 or for the canning, I have created a little canning page and it's hashtag canning with Jenny, J-E-N-I. I'll put it across the bottom of the screen for you. I'm also on Facebook and you can visit my blog for all of my recipes, including this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.